This video is designed to demonstrate how quick and easy it is to install an Advantage plug and play filter system. In this video, we will go step by step through the whole process. The first thing you'll want to do is to prepare a flat area where you plan to install the filter system. Near this same area, you will want to have a suction line exposed that is connected to the pond bottom drain and skimmer. You'll also want to have a second line that will serve as a return line which connects to your waterfall and jets. Finally, you will need to have a dedicated 20 amp electrical outlet installed within 15 feet of this location. Next, you'll want to place the equipment pad down with the black block that is connected to the pad position on the right hand side. Also make sure the equipment pad has at least 10 inches of clearance behind it to allow room for the UV light which will overhang the rear of the pad. Once the equipment pad is in position, you'll want to make sure that it is level. You can accomplish this by using a level to check the slope of the pad in both directions. Next, you will need to install the electrical control tower. You can do this by placing it over the black support block with the switches facing toward the front of the pad. Then secure the pad to the block by installing the four screws, which are provided, into the four pre-drilled holes in the base of the tower. Once that is accomplished, you can place the filter tank onto the right side of the equipment pad. Don't worry about the exact placement of the tank at this point. Just make sure the two bulkhead fittings on the tank are facing toward the front of the pad. The next step is to add the filter media into the tank. To make this task easier, we designed the tank plumbing so that the upper lateral pipe inside the filter can easily be moved to one side, out of the way, while installing the media. To add the bead media, you will need to remove the rubber band and open the plastic bag. Then carefully place the open end of the bag well down into the filter tank and slowly allow the bead media to empty into the tank. Be careful that you don't spill any of the beads by accidentally pulling the open end of the bag out of the filter opening while moving the bag to encourage the beads to flow into the filter. It's very important that you have the correct amount of beads installed in each filter. If you have too many beads, the filter won't backwash properly. If you don't have enough, it won't filter properly. So you'll notice in the Advantage 5 filter, it requires a total of two boxes of the bead media. One is pre-installed at the factory, so during installation, you're gonna to have to add one additional box. The Advantage 10 filter requires three boxes of bead media. One is installed at the factory, so during installation, you're gonna to have to add two boxes of beads. Finally, the Advantage 15 filter requires four boxes of bead media. To keep the weight down, we don't install any at the factory. So during installation, you're gonna to have to add all four boxes of bead media. Once all the media is installed, don't forget to return the upper lateral pipe back to the center of the tank opening. Finally, after all the media is installed in the filter, you can screw the top closure lid in place. To accomplish this, first, Make sure there are no beads caught in the threads of the tank. Then simply hand screw the lid down as far as you can and then finally snug it down with the top closure lid wrench. There is a caution though. Do not put any grease on the threads. Many types of grease will turn into a glue-like substance after sitting in the sun for several months. Next, we're gonna to need to assemble the multi-port head to the tank. You can do this by simply pushing the head up against the two bulkhead fittings on the filter tank. Once it is in place, you can then hand tighten the two unions. After the head is firmly attached to the tank, you will need to level the multi-port head. This can be accomplished by simply placing a level on top of the face of the head and moving the head back and forth until again it is level. You can then position the filter on the pad so that the tank is almost touching the control tower and the unions are about one inch away from the tower. Next, we will be installing the UV light. 
Some systems will come with a bypass on the UV light while others do not. So if you are installing a 2000 or a 6000 plug and play system, you will need to assemble the bypass before you install the UV light. To accomplish this, you will want to take the three-way valve and make sure the O-ring is firmly in place and then attach it to the end of the UV light where the lamp will be installed by simply screwing the unions together. Next, you will need to attach the bypass tube by simply assembling the two pieces with the green dots together and tightening the unions. You don't need to tighten these unions very much at this point. Just simply get everything connected. Once everything is assembled, then you can tighten up all the unions. Once that is done, you will need to attach the UV light to the system. First, you will need to remove the blue tape that was added to keep the O-ring in place. Then you can simply set the UV light in place and connect the unions. Next, we will want to position the pump on the equipment pad and connect the pump plumbing. In this installation, if we installed the pump with the basket facing forward, the plumbing line would have to swing around the front of the pump to the rear of the pad to connect to the suction line. But if we choose to install the pump with the basket facing to the rear of the pad, the plumbing on the suction line is much shorter with fewer elbows. At this point, connecting the pump to the filter head is simply a matter of connecting the pipe with the red dot to the union with the red dot on the head. Then simply connect the union on the other end of the pipe to the top of the pump. Next, we will need to install the blower. You can do this by simply placing the blower on top of the upright check valve and tightening up the union. Now we are to the point to where we will need to connect the filter system to the pond plumbing. The first thing we'll need to do is to cut and install a two inch piece of pipe running from the pump to the suction line leading from the bottom drain in the skimmer. If the pump is above the water level of the pond, we will want to install a check valve which comes with the system. This will prevent the water in the pump basket from flowing back to the pond each time you open the pump basket to clean it, which in turn would cause the system to lose prime. Next, we will need to connect to the return line. To do this, all we need to do is to cut and cement a two inch piece of pipe leading from the end of the UV light to the return line leading to the waterfall and jets. Now, in the event the system is being installed where the pump is below the water level of the pond, you will need to install a slide valve near the pump. This will allow you to manually shut off the water flow from the pond when cleaning the pump basket. Without a manual shut off, the water in the pump basket will overflow each time it is opened. You will still need to install the check valve somewhere in this line to prevent the blower from pushing air to the pond during the backwashing process. Make sure to install the slide valve close to the pump. This will make it much more convenient when cleaning the pump basket. Next, you will need to install the waistline. The waistline is necessary to deliver the waste collected by the filter to an appropriate area for disposal. The only thing you want to keep in mind is that the line should be at least two inches in diameter and should have a gradual downhill slope to it. This is important so that the blower doesn't have to fight the pressure of standing water in a long waste pipe when the blower is used to agitate the bead media during the backwashing procedure. Now let's take a few moments and connect the electrical. First you will want to open the lid on the electrical box at the base of the electrical tower. Then plug the cord from the water pump into the top right socket marked number one. This will allow the pump to be controlled by the switch marked number one on the top of the tower. 
Next, you want to plug the air blower into the bottom socket of the GFCI on the left side of the box. This will allow the blower to be operated by the switch on the face of the blower while the pump socket is hot only when the number one switch on top is turned on. Then go ahead and close up the weatherproof box cover. Now if you plug the main cord of the plug and play system into your power source, the system is now ready to start up. To start the system, you will first need to add water to the pump basket, reinstall the pump lid, and then turn on the pump. To successfully prime the pump, you may need to repeat this procedure several times. Once the system is flowing, Check all the unions for leaks, and if a union is leaking, simply tighten it up. The last step in the installation is to install the UV lamp. To do this properly, you need to let the system operate for at least 10 minutes so you can check for a leak in the quartz sleeve seal. To check for a leak, you simply roll up a paper towel and slide it about 6 inches into the end of the UV unit for just a few seconds and then remove it. Carefully check the towel for any moisture. If the towel is dry, that means the quartz sleeve seal inside the unit is working properly and it's now safe to install the lamp. To install the lamp, simply slide it into the UV, leaving the end of the lamp extended out slightly. Notice that the four pin connector pattern is shaped like a shoebox in that it will fit one way, but when turned 90 degrees, it won't fit. So when the pins line up, Slide the connector all the way onto the lamp pins for a good solid connection. Next, simply slide the lamp the rest of the way into the unit and hand tighten the gray nut. You don't need to tighten this with a wrench. You just want to keep rainwater out of it. The last thing you need to do is to open the electrical box on the base of the tower and plug the UV into the upper GFCI socket on the left side and you're finished. So what have you accomplished? In a very short period of time, you have successfully installed a very professional, high quality koi pond filter system that is guaranteed not only to be extremely easy to maintain, but will also give you exceptionally clear and healthy water for years to come.